Welcome to episode 36 of Shane Talks. Lost track for a second there. Episode 36 of Shane Talks. This is going to be the cartoon episode. Uh, I am joined as every week by Jason L. Mayer. And this week was his idea. Uh, after we wrapped up last week's episode, he, he threw out the idea that we should do an episode about cartoons. He put up a poll about the Disney afternoon, which we'll filter in or figure in later in this episode. And uh, then we had a couple more polls this week talking about some other cartoon stuff. And we're going we're gonna to address a lot of it. It's probably like 90 or 100 things we're going to talk about tonight. So you can probably expect like a four to five hour episode this time. Probably going to be a pretty long one. Um, beer talk. Uh, so this week, uh, our next big holiday that not everybody uh, celebrates uh, is coming up before our next episode will come out. So I'm going to... Uh, drink a couple beers I've been holding on to in my stash uh, for 420. Uh, they're both from a brewery in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, somewhere in Georgia. Uh, not it's called a holiday, but go ahead. I mean, some people consider it a holiday. It's not a government <laughs> holiday yet. Um, so uh, it's Sweetwater Brewing uh, down in Georgia. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's Atlanta, but it could be somewhere else. Actually, my glass tells me yeah, it's Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, so the first one I'm drinking is called the 420 Strain. It is a Mango Kush Wheat Ale. Uh, both of these beers I've never had before, so these are going to be my first uh, tastes of them right now. So this is a Mango Wheat Ale with a little bit of a, a hint of 420 with it. And that's very light and refreshing, and the back end gives you a little of the sticky. Uh, the second one that I'm going to be drinking tonight, um, this one, when I cracked the can open and started pouring it, was um, a very distinct and discernible odor of uh, the marijuana. Uh, this one is called Strain Be Real. It is a Mexican-style lager. It is apparently brewed in conjunction with Cypress Hill. Um so Dr. Green Thumb helped them nail down the recipe for this intense Mexican style lager. Pick it, crack it, drink it, come along. Um, uh, so, where did you get these? Uh, just various liquor stores. Uh, well, one of them was brought over to me uh, as a gift. The other one I found at a liquor store after I had already seen that gift. So I bought it specifically to drink around this time of the year, knowing that they were both. Uh, I mean, anybody that doesn't know hops is like a, a Kentucky cousin to marijuana so any beer that's brewed with hops is like in the same family as marijuana so some people just decide to actually brew with marijuana from time to time and that is exactly what this second beer smells like no question uh anybody that would ever smell this would know exactly what went into brewing this beer And it's oddly, uh, it's a lot lighter and goes down a lot easier than I expected from how it smells. It's, it's, there's neither one of those, both of these beers I expected to have a very like IPA flavor to them, even though it's a wheat ale and a, a lager, but they're both very light and, and very easy to drink. So very interesting. Not at all as I was expecting. Oh. So yay. That's going to be fun to drink tonight. Uh, you're not drinking today because you get your second COVID shot tomorrow, right? I can COVID shot tomorrow and they say hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. So cool, cool. So good luck with that. Hopefully, hopefully you have no ill effects from that. Uh hey, if I have no ill effects, we'll be able to talk about nobody next week. I'm excited about that. As long as you're uh, healthy tomorrow night, we're gonna go check out nobody in a movie theater, a movie theater neither one of us have ever been to before. So we're gonna scope out some competition, see how they do stuff. I'm really looking forward to that. Crossing my fingers that you are not sick tomorrow night. I'm hoping so too. Uh, so that's what we'll be talking about next week. What did you watch this week? I watched Unhinged, the Russell Crowe movie about oh, road yeah. rage that came back out and like, uh, did that come out and when we closed or when we reopened? I can't remember. It was one of the first things when we reopened. So September, August, yeah. September. August. Uh, yeah. So uh, Unhinged. Um, it probably gets a two and a half out of five. Okay. Uh, Russell Crowe's very weird and crazy in this movie. It's on uh, Prime. Oh, cool. Then I will definitely watch it. Um, I, I 
another one that I think like I was feeling the tense, how tense it was while I was at home by myself with lights on. I think it would have just been amped up if I were in a theater with the lights off and with the actual surround sound mm-hmm. pumping into the building. Um, I think I probably would have liked it maybe a little bit more. Um, there's some stuff that happens in the movie that's just completely impossible. Okay. There, um, so it's it's definitely a popcorn flick. Turn off your brain, just enjoy it. Um, it but it's really messed up, and it was, some of the stuff that he does is just like somebody had some issues when they wrote this script so. <laughs> so let me ask you a question how much does it compare to the michael douglas 1992 film falling down i've never watched falling down all the way through oh okay Something that was interesting to me uh i found this one a little bit more interesting um just because i i don't, I don't know why but uh-huh. It was something that I was interested in seeing, just didn't see it before we lost it. And then I just, yeah, I was going to watch it and found it on Prime and went, oh, hey, I can watch this now. Let's do that nice. now. I did that. Uh, uh, what was the other thing that was popping in my head? Oh, TV show, TV show. I can't, uh, no, I can't really think of, I thought there was another TV show, but I'm watching The uh, the Rookie and SEAL Team are both shows that I watch sure. as the episodes get released on CBS and ABC. Um, and uh, I, The Rookie is trying to be a little, uh, is trying to be a little woke with like what's going on with the policing in the, current sure. of things they're trying not to just like act like it's not happening which is it's kind of nice but it's like i don't know like you know there's two sides to every story right so like sure. it's one of those things where like i see why they're doing it and i don't hate hate it but it's also like uh i'd rather just watch a cop show for a cop show but i can kind of understand why they're doing what they're doing with it so very cool uh, so this week, we unfortunately lost an actor slash musician that I am a big fan of. Uh, don't shake your head at me, man. DMX yeah. is great, man. His music is fun. Like he, he was he was in his music's fine. He was in his prime uh, around the early 2000s when I was very much into hip hop music. I really enjoyed. Oh, uh, yeah, exactly. It's he's got a beat to every one of his songs. It's it's really good stuff. Um but he passed away, very unfortunately. Like I said, I was a fan of his. Never really got into his gospel music. I know later in life he ended up releasing some like Christian albums. I've never listened to them, so I'm not really sure uh, what they're like or anything. But I was a big fan of his his early films that he did. Uh, so I tried. I, I wanted to watch all four of them, but I only got two out of the four done. Um, I owned Exit Wounds and Cradle to the Grave is on uh, HBO Max, I think. So I was able to watch those two this week. Still fun action movies that hold up, man. No, no, no. Exit Wounds was bad when it came out, and it's still bad today. Like, oh, the beginning sequence of Steven Seagal using the machine pistol to shoot down the helicopter that looks like it was, like, it looks like a toy helicopter when it comes crashing down that my kids are playing with in front of a <laughs> Like uh, I, that that movie, man. Um, I, I still enjoy it. I like the how you know DMX is actually undercover and that he's rich and that like you know your perspective of him is completely wrong through the majority of the movie until Steven Seagal finds out like what's really going on with DMX and who his brother is and like I still think it's an okay story. Uh, and the the thing with both of these movies that I got to watch is uh, I loved the fact that for whatever reason. Uh, the both of these DMX movies have Tom Arnold and Anthony Anderson in them. Yeah, and then for whatever reason, like that was the comedy that they decided to put into both of these like action movies for literally no reason whatsoever. Is like DMX like best friends with those two guys? Like he like he must be, or I I can't remember if those three are the same directors. Or like I Romeo, I liked Romeo Must Die. Like that one, yes. that one, it, it's good. It's not great. It's, sure fine uh, is that but, Aaliyah's only movie or did Aaliyah do I can't remember how many movies Aaliyah did I know she died right after that movie came out she did Queen of the Damned that oh, yeah. Yep. Chronicle so sequel ish thing I can't remember if those are the only two movies that she did or not but I can look that up for us yeah it's, it's, okay. 
but yeah, so I, I was not able to, uh, I wasn't willing to pay $15 for Romeo Must Die, and it's not on any streaming, so I did not watch that. And I didn't get around to watching Belly. I didn't, I honestly didn't even look to see if it was available on streaming anywhere. Uh, it's, I wouldn't say it's my least favorite, because it was like the first real movie I remember like going to a movie theater and seeing DMX in. So like, I remember that I liked the movie, but I just, I couldn't bring myself to to make the time to watch it this week, which sucks. Wait, wait, wait. Do you watch Cradle to the Grave and Exit Wounds? Correct. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I liked Romeo. Did I say Romeo was die? Yeah, you said Romeo was die is the one that you liked. Yeah, and that was that was the first one in that like DMX trilogy where uh, the first and last one had Jet Li in it, and then that middle one with Exit Wounds had Steven Seagal. I liked Never Die Alone too. He did that movie. That was that was a pretty uh, stupid film. It came out in 04. Who was who was in that with him? I don't remember that one. Uh, drug kingpins return home return home touches off a turf war um so uh dmx david arquette michael ely um clinton powell's in it tiny um uh, tom lister jr okay tiny lister yeah, interesting tiny. i don't remember that one i can't i can't Aisha say if I, saw that one. I didn't know i you should uh tyler was in it but well yeah. i mean like some of these, like Cradle to the Grave, that's got Gabriel Union in it, and then like Exit Wounds had um, uh, Eva Mendez in it. Like the Exit Wounds cast is ridiculous with people that are like you know much bigger actors now. Yeah, they. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I I I liked that one. I remember what ended up watching it for whatever reason. Right on. Yeah, I don't I don't think I've seen that one. Uh, so Rest in Power DMX. Really sad that you know. He, his life ended the way that it did. Kind of sucks. Uh, side note: You're yep. uh, you're falling down. Cinematographer was the guy who directed Romeo Must Die. Andre Bartonacic or whatever. Yeah, Bartokoia. Bartok. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. He was the cinematographer on Falling Down and Speed. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, because Jan de Bont directed Speed. That's right. Yep. Yo. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty interesting. I just thought that was kind of like so just, so that so so that guy uh he directed exit wounds did he also direct cradle to the grave uh give me a second Aaliyah, queen of the damned mm-hmm. romeo must die everything else that's listed on her stuff it looks like music her videos music videos yep gotcha. so uh you said Go back Rome- to that andre bartachach guy or whatever because i know he directed at least two if not three of those dmx movies um he directed doom <laughs> oh i like the last like first person perspective uh, part of that movie was kind sure. of fun. uh he did cradle to the grave he did yep. exit wounds he did romeo must die those okay were... so he did all three of those okay cool and he also did street fighter the legend of chun li oh all right well so his career did not take off so um yeah. And then the only other uh, major thing that I watched this week uh, that I I literally did not expect to get hooked the way that I did, uh, HBO released a four-episode documentary on Inside the NBA, which is a show that I've literally watched my entire life. Like, I don't, I don't remember a point in my life when I didn't watch Inside the NBA. Um, but obviously, when I was younger, I never really paid attention to, like, I mean, I was just watching a show about basketball, and that's all I cared about. But... Um, this documentary, each of the four episodes, which are a little over an hour each, uh, focuses on all four of the guys that are there now, starting with Ernie Johnson in the first episode. And it's it was a great flashback to the 80s and 90s and like reminded me of, of like the show that I watched back then when I didn't really know what it was. It goes through all the original hosts and, you know, really shows you the, the genesis of this whole whole thing. Then you've got the second episode when they brought in uh, Kenny Smith and it shows the dynamic that they had together. And when it was a like much more serious basketball show and whatnot, Uh, episode three uh, starts talking about Charles Barkley and brings him in and how things changed when, when, uh, when Chuck came on and how they started to get a little more goofy and a little more silly. And then the last episode, when they bring on Shaquille O'Neal, it, it just, it, it, shows how the show evolved into what it is today which it's a lot of fun to watch today a lot of the bits and segments and like how the show has evolved into like a a popular show like 
like a late night talk show. Like it's got their skit, their skits and sketches that they do. And uh, the fact that none of them are afraid to make fun of each other. None of them are afraid to be the butt of the joke. Um, there's a lot of behind the scenes footage of these four guys. There's a lot of like uh, current interviews with like, it has the four of them sitting at a round table that it cuts to when they talk about and tell stories and whatnot. And then it's got fl flashback stuff to like uh, behind the scenes stuff and when jokes go wrong and like stuff like that. And it's just, for somebody who loves basketball and loves like watching those four guys, it's a really fun documentary. So I know you like basketball. I don't know if you'd ever be willing to sit down and watch it, but I literally, the day that I fired it up, I was like, Oh, I'll just watch the first episode today. Literally sat in my couch for like six hours watching it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I watched all four episodes in a row just because I was so, I was just enjoying it. Like, and that's the thing, like, there's not really much to it. I don't think anybody else will like sit down and watch all four of them. Like, like I said, I plan to watch one and then, you know, watch another one in a couple of days or something, but I just, I was having a lot of fun watching it. Like these, the characters that these guys portray on that show is a lot of fun to see versus like how they act behind the scenes and stuff. So very, very cool documentary that I, that I really recommend if you like basketball or if you like inside the NBA. You ready to talk about cartoons? Oh, wait, hold on. I got one. I got one last thing. This just came in the mail today. The okay. Mall Rats 25th anniversary double disc DVD. Now, here is the only important. Like, I'm. I'm I, I own all of it. I'm sorry. The, the Blu-ray. Apologies. The Blu-ray. I'm. Uh, I'm. I already own it on Blu-ray. But I had to buy this version for one very important thing. There's a bunch of new documentaries and stuff on here that I'm going to go through, but disc two is the TV cut of Mallrats, which I have never seen in my life. It's the one where they had some other random dude come in and do the ADR for Jason Muse's character. I think, he does, I think he does multiple characters. I'm pretty sure he's not just doing Jason Muse. Gotcha. But yeah, so it is the it is the it is the TV cut that oh. was on this that made me go, you know what? I'm gonna have to buy this Blu-ray again. And it's the anniversary edition. It's I mean, the, the amount of bonus features on here is just ridiculous. Like it's massive. Some of it's some of it's supposed to be new stuff that wasn't on like any of the other DVDs or anything. So I'm excited to go through this this week, uh, specifically for the TV cut. Let's talk about cartoons. All right. Let's start in 1957 when Hanna-Barbera started making some of the most popular cartoons, I would say, you know, of people our age um, and, uh, and people older than us. Like, obviously, like, Disney had been around making, like, animated films and whatnot and doing their shorts and everything. Uh, but Hanna-Barbera, like, when TV was coming around, was making cartoons for TV. Um, in 1982, uh, USA started something called the Cartoon Express. The USA Network was shifting to a 24-hour format, uh, in 1982 and so they needed you know more content to fill stuff so they got a bunch of the old Hanna-Barbera cartoons and created uh, in the afternoon something called the Cartoon Express which I think it was like three to five three to six like somewhere in the in the afternoon every day on USA for kids after school to watch uh, we're just going to kind of go alphabetically through the list of Hanna-Barbera stuff we can any of them that you want to talk about we can but we don't need to talk about all of these um adam's family i know i've seen it don't really remember it um captain caveman i know i watched it but i also feel like i saw him more as a supporting character in other stuff than i actually remember him having his own show yeah i, I loved his old i loved his show the or, teen angels yeah uh, i don't remember the teen angels but i remember okay. him right uh, Challenge of the Gobots. I don't know if that is like legitimately the Gobots that were the Transformers rivals. That's who it was. Okay, yeah, I remember buying those at Kmart, like because I couldn't afford Transformers. Dino Mutt, the Dog Wonder, which uh, uh, I was happy to see them bring him back in the newest Scoob movie. That was kind of cool. Uh, um, Flintstones, uh, the great, the great Grape Ape Show. I don't remember that one at all. Yeah, it wasn't worth it watching. Okay, the Herculoids is one that our friend Jay uh, talked about. He got it confused um, with something else. Thundar. He got it confused with Thundar, the Barbarian. Okay. Um, but yeah, Herculoids was one that he had he had said he watched. Hong Kong Fooey is one that I really enjoyed. Absolutely loved the dog that could jump into the the filing cabinet and come out the other one as a as a kung fu guy. 
Um, he was always pretty fun. Uh, Huckleberry Hound uh, had his own show, Jabberjaw. I don't remember. The giant uh, shark, and he was a part of a band. Oh, okay. It's, yeah, it's I don't really remember. Like Josie and the Pussycats, but with a with a mixed hodgepodge of boys and girls and a giant shark is the <laughs> yeah it was it's a weird dude it's so many of these things it's like how high were they when they were <laughs> uh so after that's johnny quest which is one that i did watch uh, it was a lot of fun um another show that we'll eventually mention was james bond jr like the two of those i remember watching around the same time uh kind of gave me the same vibe uh well and there's been many different versions of johnny quest too because they kind of relaunched that series oh then maybe i'm thinking of the relaunch yeah that, maybe i'm I, thinking of the relaunch next up is josie and the pussycats i am josie and the pussycats in outer space which i don't remember watching the outer space version but i know i've, I've know i've watched josie and the pussycats the regular one yeah uh laugh olympics did you ever watch that i want to say that's one of the ones where like they were like they constantly were having like races across the kind of like um death race 2000 but it was like it wasn't it was with the cartoon characters oh okay racing across the country and constantly driving and so like you had all these characters from all these different hanna Barbera shows that were driving cars okay and so it was literally like a huge mashup in like crossover event. It was kind of weird. Awesome. Yeah, I didn't I did not watch that at all. Um Magilla Gorilla, Quick Draw McGraw, Wally Gator, and Loopy to Loop, I don't remember, but I remember Magilla Gorilla and Quick Draw McGraw. Yeah, I'm um, right on that. I don't those remember. are fun. Uh my friend Eric is apparently the only person on the planet who also knows who the Manchichis are. I know who they are. I just don't like them. Oh, the Machichis were great, dude. They were little tiny monkey people that lived in trees. Way up in the trees lived the Manchichis. Oh, I oh I remember. I'm trying to forget, but you know it happened. The Manchichis are great, man. They were so much fun. I don't even remember who the villain was or doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. Uh the Pac-Man had his own show. I remember that. Yeah. Um, Paw Paws, not sure what that was. Uh, Pebbles and Bam Bam had their spinoff from the Flintstones. Yeah. Did they age them up for that, or were they still just kids? Oh, I, I can't say, remember. I think they aged them up. I, I thought think so too. Teenagers or something. That, that sounds right. Uh, Popeye and Son, which is not anything I've ever heard of. I don't remember it. Yeah, I remember the Richie Rich cartoon and all of the Scooby Doo spinoffs. Yep. Scooby was obviously amazing. Uh, C Lab Twenty Twenty, no clue. Uh, yeah, I don't remember that at all. Uh, neither do I. I loved the shirt tails. I meant to get up in my attic because I'm pretty sure that I still have all five of them that McDonald's gave out uh, with their Happy Meals back in the 80s. Oh, oh, were these the animals that lived in the tree that all yes. had a, you know, yep. like a Care Bear kind of thing? Sort of like there was Rick the Raccoon, who was my yep. favorite. And yep. then there was uh, Bogey the Monkey. Um uh, uh i can't remember what the other one there was uh, ti- t- there was a tiger i can't remember what the tiger's name was that was like tony or tiny maybe it was tiny i don't remember that's weird. i feel like it couldn't have been tony uh yeah. but yeah so yeah it, there, there was five of them i meant i meant to get up in my attic because i'm pretty sure i still have all five of them because i was a huge shirt tails fan and obviously i can't throw anything away in my life so i'm pretty sure it's in my giant tub of stuffed animals uh the smurfs obviously is is one of the most beloved cartoons ever um it it, watching it but well when i was a kid i loved it but you know years ago i I caught some episodes and watched it and was just like what is this like it definitely it definitely doesn't feel the same as it did when i was a kid uh snorks i remember but i don't i don't remember watching it a lot like i I remember who they are but i just i didn't remember watching it a whole lot you just love watching snorks uh space cadets don't know what that is oh. uh space ghost and dino boy i'm assuming is the space ghost that i watched i don't remember dino it's boy space ghost way before he ever had the cartoon network tv okay show. so uh if you ever watched a regular space ghost this is it so. yeah i remember i remember watching this but i don't remember the dino boy Ooh. aspect of it maybe wacky races is the one i was thinking of I think Wacky Races might be what you're thinking of, because I'm pretty sure that's the one my buddy John Petty was talking about where um, 
Oh, you the Laugh Olympics was the same kind of thing, but it just was it? literally was just like them competing and he like uh screwing each like all the bad guys would screw over all the good guys while they were doing like uh track and field and stuff like, oh, like okay. doing the Olympics. They were doing the Olympics, but it was like a cartoon version and they kept trying to Got screw it. everybody over. So yeah, wacky races my buddy John uh brought up because of um oh the bad guy. He ended up being the bad guy in the Scoob movie. Um Dirk Dastardly. Yeah. And, uh, and his dog apparently uh, were originally on Wacky Races. Yes, very much so, yeah. Uh, and then we've got a couple of different Yogi the Bear shows. Um, I'm assuming Yogi's Gang is the one. Well, like, I thought it was called like Yogi Bear and Friends or something like that. Yeah, whatever. Um, but yeah, so those were the most popular ones from uh, Hanna-Barbera. And then just to address uh, the most popular ones on the poll that we did, Scooby-Doo was number one, uh, which I won't argue with because it's probably my favorite Hanna-Barbera property. Um, growing up, I liked stuff like the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew and Scooby Doo because I liked solving mysteries and stuff like that. So, they didn't give you enough information, Michael. My brother Michael pointed that out. They never give you enough information to actually figure out the problem, they, True. like the 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 mystery. So they kept screwing kids over when they were not giving them the whole picture. So that's kind of crappy. Um, I do I, and I don't agree because I still like. I uh, I don't know. No, there was always that time where Velma was like, I found this, and they never showed you her You're right. actually finding it. That You're would right. give away, like, made the entire thing, like, bust open. It was really stupid. So. I don't know if I would say that it was really stupid, because would you want, like, I mean, 10 minutes into an episode to immediately see Velma do that and then know, oh, obviously that's who the bad guy is? Like, but that's just held bad, out that to make... Ah, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know if I can agree with guys that. Guys were probably churning these out like a like they were, you know, factory workers in China. <laughs> uh, second place on the poll was the Jetsons. Um, I, like I like the Jetsons. Jetsons movie more than I like the Jetsons. I'll agree with that. The Jetsons movie is really solid. Really enjoy it. Uh, do you like the Jetsons more than the Flintstones? Um, I'm okay. Like they're they're kind of neck and neck for me. Flintstones. I'll give you that. Uh, fourth on the poll was Tom and Jerry. That's easily my number one. Is it Tom- really? Dude, yeah, so let me tell you a quick story about Tom and Jerry. Have you watched it any time in the last, I don't know, yep. recently? I watched yep. it uh, at the airport when we were coming back from Arizona. Uh, it's violent. It's massively violent. And it's like, awesome. I agree. Like, I agree that I enjoy it and I think it's awesome. But, like, I don't understand how there's not, like, parent groups these days that are, like, boycotting and trying to oh. trying to end Tom and Jerry. Yeah, you're not like it's not gonna it doesn't show like you can catch it right now on certain channels but it's usually at night or like overnight you okay. don't find it when kids are typically awake uh because people don't want to show it to kids same thing with looney tunes looney tunes uh i own a disc of looney tunes uh, a dvd that i bought for my kids because i was like oh they got to see this and uh, i bought it years and years ago and like the back of it says this is a collector's item this is not children's programming like really yeah there's a like literally a box on the back that says this is for an this is adult collector's item this is not for children like this cartoon's not suitable for children and stuff like that and it's like wow don't get me wrong. I can watch it and totally understand where they're coming from from that sure. aspect. But even watching it with my children, I have no problems with my kids watching with what they are seeing. It's just I, I don't. I think it's amazing to me that they're so against certain things. But well, you know, I mean, you got to look at the way society has kind of gone downhill in the last fifty years. Parents think they can just put that kind of stuff on TV. And then their kids are going to think that we can emulate that kind of stuff that we see on TV and then people die. Well, no, but if you're parenting correctly, you shouldn't have that problem with your children. You're a hundred percent right. And I a hundred percent support and agree with your statement, but parents these days aren't always that smart. You and I did not go around killing people because we watched Tom and Jerry cartoons. We didn't push people off of buildings or hit them in the back of the head with two by fours. Like that's not something that we did. I may have hit somebody in the back of the head with a two by four. I may have done that. <laughs> it's possible. Fifth, we're fifth, three fifth. Stooges. We're not the three stooges either. That's <laughs> another thing that's been canceled and not allowed to be shown to kids. Really? I didn't even think about yeah. that, but that makes sense. Yeah, all the eye gouging mm-hmm. and the the nut kicking and everything else man like wow i love those shows and that i grew up on tom and jerry and and the three stooges sure 
heck, even the Animaniacs and Tiny Toons were doing. Oh yeah. That by today's standards is not cool. Uh, fifth place on the poll was the Smurfs. What are your feelings on the Smurfs? Yeah, they're just fine. Like I, I never was a big fan of them. So got you. Uh, sixth place was the Yogi Bear show, which like uh, yes, Yogi Bear was awesome and Boo Boo. Uh, Super Friends. Were you a Super Friends fan? I was uh, just because it was pretty much the only superhero stuff you could sure. like, tangibly get a hold of at that point in time in the mid eighties for me. Mm-hmm. So it was either that or um, what was I going to say? You could watch the reruns from Batman, the 66 series. Of oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, next up was the space ghost show. Uh, and then Captain caveman and Johnny quest were the, the top ones getting votes on there. So pretty decent. Uh, like I said, the top four or five are all pretty close in what, what people liked from Hanna Barbera. Mm-hmm. Um. Near the end of the 80s, uh, Cartoon Express kind of shifted a little bit. Uh, at some point during the 90s, they even switched over to a six-hour block on Sunday mornings. That was called the Sunday Morning Cartoon Express. Um, Which and is they, helpful, because I'm looking at the dates that you have listed on the yep. Cartoon Express, and I was like, I know I watched a ton of these shows way before these dates. Yep. Um, so the, the dates I have listed on there are the dates they were actually on the Cartoon Express. Yeah, I they, they they bought obviously they bought the rights for you know the syndication rights or whatever to show these cartoons again. So they they you were totally right. They aired on other networks on like you know Saturday morning cartoons you know on ABC or NBC or CBS or whatever. Um, and then I I don't I'm not sure why Cartoon Express decided to do Sunday morning maybe the other networks still had programming on Saturday morning. So they kind of wanted to just dominate their own day. They did. So, yeah. So they took a bunch of the other shows from other networks uh, and years later, you know, threw them together on cartoon express. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog was on from 95 to 96. Um, I know I've seen it. I, it's not memorable enough for me to remember it. My kids watch it all the time right now. On, like the like the old Sonic the Hedgehog? Not, either, not, not either, a new one? Uh, it's either on Prime or Netflix and they watch it all the time. And it's like the old 90s animation. Like, it's not like a redo of it. Oh, that's awesome. Well, they, they uh, have like two or three different Sonic cartoons that they watch. So Nice. Uh, the Adventures of Super Mario Brothers 3. Again, I know I've seen it. Don't really remember it very well. Yeah, both of those, came, especially when those started rolling out, would be mm-hmm. probably getting to that age where we weren't watching many cartoons at this point in time. So Define many, because I still watch cartoons every day. Yeah, but I mean, like we weren't doing that right after like these are while we're in high school we weren't rushing home to get on or we weren't we had other things we were preoccupied with at that point for sure cadillacs and dinosaurs is a show i've never heard of which is really i i kind of remember it but i don't a whole lot to it uh captain n and the video game masters uh it's on my shelf right back there. It was actually a gift from you because we had talked about it at one point. Uh, you yeah. ever watched it? Uh, I have not watched it yet. Of course. Of course you haven't. I, I mean, you gave it, it to me like 10 years ago. years ago. Yes. Yeah, 15, yeah, maybe. I think it was before oh. I moved to Massachusetts, so it was 15 yeah. years ago. I still it, got it. I very proudly have it. I should have brought it over here to, to show right now, but I still own it. Uh, but yeah, it's on disc, so I haven't, well, I haven't put it in. Fun, and it's an entertaining show, especially when you were for the people who were severely into video gaming at that point in time. So sure, uh, Chipmunks go to the movies. I literally have no. I remember watching the regular Chipmunks show, but I have no idea what Chipmunks go to the movies is. No clue. Uh, cops. Dude. I liked cops. It I was, liked, I had the uh, I had action figures of them. So. I, I had uh, like misdemeanor was one of the the bad guys I remember. I, I had the main good guy with the like the briefcase. Dog. This this and he had like a silver briefcase. I think he might have, but I know I remember a silver like canine that also had like a uh, police red police siren on the top of him. Uh, yep, yeah, I remember that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, cops was, cops was a lot of fun. I remember I remember really liking that show. I also loved Denver the Last Dinosaur. Me too. Yeah, like, dude, Denver was so much fun. And I've even sang that song to my kids. Like, oh, nice. And shown them what it is because my kids. Very catchy theme song. Very much into dinosaurs. So, 
Dude, that's great. Yeah, Denver Denver was a lot of fun. And it lasted four seasons on there. So, like, there was a good chunk of, of Denver to, to be to be watched. Uh, real quick, uh, this is one that I don't think ended up – I don't know if you put it on the, on the last poll or not. Uh, wasn't there a cop show or, like, a, a space cowboy show called, like, Brave Star or something that you watched? It was. I did not watch it. I was not oh, okay. to it. Uh, oh, okay. I remember our friend Tony actually owned like the some of the action figures, uh, but they cool. were like giant action figures compared to like GI Joe or whatever. They sure, were, they were even bigger, I think, than Thundercats. Yeah, I can't remember if that was put on the last poll or not, so I don't know if we'll end up talking about it. But like at at one point in the last week, I thought about Brave Star and was like, oh, I need to make sure that like I add that somewhere, and I don't I don't know if it ever got added. Yeah, he was uh, like a Native American mm-hmm. space cowboy. Yeah. So. And like I remember, like he could like had a had a, like a holographic eagle or whatever he could call out for something. Yeah, can't remember. Yeah. Uh, the next show I remember watching a lot, but I I, I don't think I've ever watched it since was Dragon's Lair. You I remember enjoying saucers. What's that? You missed dinosaurs. Oh, I missed dinosaurs. I did. I don't know dinosaurs. I don't know either. So. Okay, so we don't need to talk about, about it at all. Come back, Jason. You're frozen. Uh, Dragon's Lair. Oh, there you go. You're back. Right. Yeah, Dragon's Lair. Did you watch the dragon? Yeah, you froze for a second, but it's all good. Dragon's Lair. Did you watch it? Yeah, I, I I think I watched the cartoon. I remember playing the game more than I remember sure. watching the cartoon. Um, so. The Adventures of Mr. Magoo. Watched it. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids was a lot of fun. I remember enjoying that show a lot growing oh, up. Yeah. Uh, and then you know. I'm easily in my top three cartoons of all time is G.I. Joe, the original uh, American Hero uh, series. I know you enjoyed that as well. You didn't? No, no, no. It, it's just, I don't think I've popped in an episode of that in forever. Although, apparently, like, all of G.I. Joe and all of Transformers are all available on Hasbro's uh, YouTube channel. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And I, one of the things that makes me laugh is thinking about the fact that they actually have a movie. Like, I love the Transformers movie, cartoon movie, but the G.I. Joe movie is so bad. Whatever. Before oh. streaming was streaming, I made sure I bought all of the seasons on DVD so that I, so that I owned them. Granted, a I, lot don't of pop, money. I, I don't pop discs in anymore, so it's, it's a very large paperweight that I have. What's that? Because you're lazy. I'm very lazy. But yeah, so it's a really large paperweight because I refuse to rebuy them. Is it, how, how much is Hasbro's app? Or no, you said their YouTube channel they're all on? Yeah, they're just free oh. on YouTube. So I don't even need those discs anymore, but nobody will buy them because, you know, everybody can go to YouTube. Uh, but yeah, so I, I, I was a big fan of both of those shows to the point where, you know, like 10 or 15 years ago, as they released all those, I bought them. Uh because at that time, I still watched things on discs and enjoyed it. Um, so after that's the Great Space Coaster. No clue what that is. Okay. Uh, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Obviously, probably also in my top three. That and Transformers are, and G.I. Joe are like probably my top three cartoons growing up. Yeah, easily. Uh, I, my collection of He-Mans was kind of crazy and outrageous. So Yeah. Uh, He-Man was awesome. And I'm excited about the Kevin Smith He-Man series that's uh, coming out. At some point in this year, I believe, or yeah, uh, yeah, I think it's coming out in 2021. Supposed to be uh, a, a continuation of that original series. Yep, uh, it, you're supposed to be able to watch the original series and then like where it ends. Like they apparently pick up a story thread that was like never finished on that original series, and they just keep going with it. Have you watched any of those lately? The original He Man's, I have not. They are very not good. Really. Like, yeah, like the the storytelling in them is very bad, um, but I mean they churn, they churned out like a ton of episodes in a very small period of time. Sure. So. Um, uh, I do know. I just listened to uh, Kevin Smith's most recent podcast, and he said that next month we will start seeing uh, some of the stills and the animation and artwork from the show. So, kind of excited to see what it looks like. Um, let's see. Hulk Hogan's Rockin' Wrestling? Rockin' and Wrestling? Um, I don't remember it either, and it's funny because our buddy, uh, Chris Schneider posted it on our, on the final poll I did of, like, what have I missed that you guys liked, and he posted that up there, so 
I don't remember it at all. Uh, also, JC and the Wheeled Warriors. No clue who that is. It was just Jace and the Wheeled Warriors. So it was a uh, it was a post apocalyptic world where plants had meshed with technology, and uh, Jace was this like he was kind of like the Luke Skywalker essentially. Like he okay. he could be the one that gets everybody to go back to normal kind of thing i don't know oh. uh, it was a weird it was a weird show but they had a cool concept so nice jim did you ever watch jim unfortunately oh jim man i did too something that did catch my attention sometimes i liked jim oh and the other one that i don't think ever shows up that i don't remember seeing that i can bring up right now like my two things as a kid like i like jim and the holograms and i liked my little pony as well oh no, no yeah i don't know why you're on your I own think, boat on that one. I think I think the girl that I liked when I was like eight was into My Little Pony. Sure, sure. that's totally why it was. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I got I got no other answer. <laughs> some of the other <laughs> cartoons that have, uh, you know, I'll wait to bring them up until after we're done. But okay, uh, we we can go to we can talk about it. Uh, Maxie's World. I have no idea what that is. Me neither. I know I I know I've seen an animated Mr. T, but I don't think I ever actually watched the show. No, oh, I definitely did not watch that. Yeah, no clue what pole position was. Uh, it was a racing game based on the uh, video game from oh, like okay. or whatever, um, but I don't remember much about it at all. Uh, the real Ghostbusters, I remembered. I oh, I remember liking it. Uh, the one with the monkey. No, 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 no. That's a go. That's the Ghostbusters. The real Ghostbusters is the one that had the characters from, from, from the, the movie. Yeah, they and because it made Slimer like a really big. Part. Yeah, uh, the, that the show that you're talking about with the monkey was just called the Ghostbusters, and they couldn't get the rights away from them for the animated show, so that's why they had to use the name the real Ghostbusters. You, I don't know if you remember this, the Ghostbusters one. They actually had. I can't remember if it was just their like. I don't remember if it was just the commercials for their toys or okay. if it was the beginning of their television show before but they had like live actors playing the two main no people. and then somebody dressed up in a monkey suit no I way remember. oh yeah totally oh i, I didn't know i didn't know anything about that that's crazy yeah. i can't remember if that was a, a like i said a commercial or the introduction so uh did you watch Shira? I was a huge He-Man fan, huge okay. He-Man fan, and so She-Ra just came along naturally with that. The okay. Power of the Sword was a movie that they made to introduce She-Ra. Okay, uh, yep. She was the uh, half sister, or she's the sister of um, of He-Man, Prince, Ad Prince Adam. Yeah, Prince Adam and He-Man, and uh, so she and she was stolen, kind of like a Rapunzel, essentially. And uh, but the power of the sword was them crossing over and becoming like uh, they introduced Hordak. Hordak was the bad guy for Shira, and she okay. and Hordak was the one who stole Shira from, or maybe he, I can't remember if he's the one who stole her or not, but he lived in a different dimension. And I want to oh. say he stole her and went to the other dimension. And Hordak was her main bad guy, I think essentially her skeletor yeah essentially her skeletor and then you had hordak uh was like her and hordak and skeletor were like best buds or whatever Destro and cobra commander-esque and then um and then so yeah he ended up stealing her running to the other dimension and then she got raised over there and uh but yeah the power because they both have parts of the power sword I want to say you can put together the Shira sword with the power sword, the Grace's Grace. Gold See, sword. I thought I thought He Man and Skeletor each had half of that sword. I thought they one did. was yellow I, and one was like, blue. I, I want to say like they. I want to say the Shira sword was somehow tied into it. Oh, too. Okay, I can't. Remember. I know I watched it, but I I don't remember it at all. I I didn't watch that show as much as I watched the Power of the Sword movie. Movie, gotcha. That was definitely more my thing. So. Uh, I definitely did not watch the Superman Batman adventures. It's off and on. Okay. Definitely, this is the point in time. I remember loving the Batman animated series. Oh, Batman, yeah. Oh, Batman, yeah. The animated series. Yep. Uh, I love that. Uh, but like I said earlier, with things that were happening at the beginning of this list, 
we were probably just aging out by the point in time where we were finding other things that needed to be done instead of watching cartoons. For so. sure. Uh, we did an entire three-hour episode on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so I don't feel like we need to really justify the fact that we both really loved that show. Uh, Terry Tunes, no clue what that is. Nope. Uh, Turbo Teen, vaguely remember it was a kid that could turn into a car. Ooh. Like, uh, that's really the only thing I remember, but I don't remember the <laughs> villains or anything. But really fucked up with stuff. It, it was and like I don't I, I don't even remember the the transformation part of it. I just remember like I just remember like the kid would like jump up and then like flatten out and like yeah get they longer would, like melt yes like, or widen out to be the front of the car. And then yeah. it was like a red sports car. Yeah, it was nuts. Yeah, so uh, Voltron obviously easily in my top five cartoons of all time. Like I'm a huge Voltron fan. I've enjoyed the Netflix series. I'm like a couple seasons behind on it, but. Watched the first two or three seasons of, of the Netflix version. Still love Voltron. Still still love the idea and the concept of it. Um, and then the Woody Woodpecker show, um, which I definitely watched. Uh, 95, 96 is when it was on Cartoon Express, but I know I definitely watched that in the very early 90s. Yeah, it was def- I definitely watched it too. Uh, so looking at, the, looking at the poll results, G.I. Joe and Ninja Turtles tied for the most amount of votes. Uh, followed by He-Man, which, I mean, that's a very solid top three right there. Absolutely. Um, fourth place got the real Ghostbusters, which, like, I don't I don't hate because, like, I remember enjoying the show, but I didn't think it was amazing. The Adventures of Super Mario Brothers 3, of all things, got a pretty large number of votes, followed by Voltron, which I find, like, I expected Voltron to be far, far up higher on the list. Mm-hmm. Uh Apparently, I do need to watch Captain N and the Video Game Masters because a, a lot of people on the poll uh, agree with agree with you that it's a good show. But you won't because you don't want to put in the disc. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll figure it out. Uh, maybe maybe it's on a streaming service that I don't know about. Does Disney own that? Does Disney own that yet? <laughs> have, have they bought that cartoon? Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, Cops. I'm happy made made pretty high vote count on the list. Superman and Batman Adventures and then the Woody Woodpecker show are kind of the top 10-ish on there that had that had a decent number of votes on them. Um, next up, we're going to go to the category that uh, started this whole idea for this week's episode, and that was when you brought up the Disney Afternoon. Uh, so the way I want to kind of do this is we've got the chart of every season of the Disney Afternoon. Uh, obviously, the first four we'll talk about in depth, and then we'll just address the fact that the way the Disney Afternoon works is it's got four shows. And if you're in the three o'clock spot, you get kicked off the show. The other three shows get bumped up by a half hour. And then that 430 show is a new one for the next season. So I know you're a big fan. Uh, Season one was from 1990 to 91. The three o'clock show was the Adventures of the Gummy Bears or Gummy Bears. And I know you're a big fan of that show. Uh, Um, Well, Gummy Bears, according to the according to the theme song. But uh, true. Gumi, uh, my German pronunciation. Uh, yeah, my brothers used to always make fun of me for watching that show because they were like, "That's not how you pronounce gummy bears." <laughs> bears. Um, um, gummy bears, gummy bears was fine. Um, the gummy juice that they used to drink and chug like it was alcohol or something, just mm-hmm. so that it could bounce everywhere. It was a little strange, but it was sure. a little. It is what it is. It was a pretty goofy cartoon. Uh, one of one of my lesser ones. Well, of, of the originals, one of my lesser ones. But then, as things go on later in this list, it it's far above some of them. Uh, the three thirty show that season was Ducktales. Love me some Ducktales. Love some Ducktales. Um, honestly, one of my favorite things to do when I go down the YouTube rabbit hole is listening to the Ducktales theme song in other languages. <laughs> Uh, you can literally find about 20 or 30 different versions of the DuckTales theme song in various languages. The Russian one is pretty intense. Um, so yeah, they're, they're, that's a fun rabbit hole thing to do. But the DuckTales the show was great. Huey, Dewey, and Louie were awesome. Uh, Mrs. Beakley. Um, and just the concept of Scrooge Launch McDuck. Pad, man. With Launch a Launchpad. Uh, yeah, so really fun show. Really, you know, ridiculous villains and ridiculous plots every week and Kind of, kind of some some dumb stuff that just kind of worked everybody out. Everybody's always trying to steal his lucky charms, essentially. <laughs> yep. Everybody uh, trying to rip off Scrooge McDuck. 
they have the the three uh, jail brothers. I can't remember their names. Yeah. Uh, but you know, every every week they had a plot to try to break in there and do stuff. Uh, the four o'clock show in season one was Chippendale's Rescue Rangers. I which... love Chippendale when it was before this, when it was just the original Chippendale with no okay. was on and always causing mischief for Donald um, and. Um, like they always thought they were a fun duo. Yep. And then this show just kind of like ratcheted it up for me, man. Like this, sure. this was a lot of fun. You had Gadget, the, who's their best friend, who's the yep. girl mechanic. The girl. Yep. And you had Monty, uh, who was like the muscle essentially. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and then you had, what was the, I can't remember the fly's name. Oh, oh yeah, I don't either. Oh, man. Uh, what I will ask you is have you seen the photo? that puts uh, Chip and Dale next to Magnum P.I. and Indiana Jones. Absolutely. That looks so perfect. Like, I, I that just really makes me happy. Uh, yeah, it, I think it's hilarious that, it, that they look like those two characters. Yeah, that's, that's a cool idea. Yeah, uh, so yeah, really, really fun show, really bonkers. I don't remember a lot of the plots from that one. So, and truth be told, the 430 show, don't remember many plots either, but I know I loved it. I turned it off a lot of times at 4 30. Really? Tailspin. I love Tailspin. Dude, Kit with uh, his like was, boomerang I surfboard. Cool. I thought it was cool how they incorporated a lot of the Jungle Book characters yep. into it. Uh, Baloo and um, Magera. Shere Khan, I believe, is in it. Shere Khan's in it. He's like the main villain, essentially. Yep. Um, but yeah, I just I didn't get into it nearly as much as everything else in that first hour and a half. i just had fun because as a kid i wanted a hoverboard and i wanted a boomerang air surfboard whatever it was so really cool and lots of fun uh so for season two they kicked everything, off the gummy bears with, everything with goes down like you said every in season yep. two everything just shifts down a half an hour yep ducktales is now at three o'clock chip and dale's at 3 30 tail spins at four o'clock and they added my favorite show ever on the disney afternoon which is darkwing duck i love the shadow as a character i was a huge fan of the of of okay i wasn't a huge fan of the movie but i liked the movie enough that i started buying the comic books around then um and you know darkwing duck actually darkwing duck predated the movie uh so that the the character of darkwing duck slash the shadow is is just a character i've always really enjoyed and and dark in literally during this point in time, uh-huh. I'm watching. I watch the first hour. I turn it off and I leave the room or whatever, and then I would come back for Darkwing Duck. Would you? Okay. You literally hated Tailspin that much. I didn't hate it. I just didn't care for it, so I just didn't waste my time with it. So if what I would you go do for a half hour? Like, why couldn't uh, you just watch the two hours at once? Play football with the guys and or I do my homework during that half okay. an hour. It might be on, but I'm not really paying attention to it. Gotcha. So. Uh so for season three, which I will probably call the last good season of the show. And after this season, we we ended up going into high school. So, you know, life changed. Uh, but season three, uh, they kicked off DuckTales. Chippendale bumped up to three o'clock. Tailspin bumped up to three thirty. Darkwing Duck bumped up to four o'clock, and they added Goof Troop, which I liked Goof Troop a lot. I thought it was all right. It was fine. Uh, I actually like the Goofy movie more than I like Goof Troop. Sure, the movie the movie's really good too. So, um, so did you did you take a break at any point during these two hours? Oh yeah, like uh, this is probably- oh because Tailspin's still there. I apologize. I forgot Tailspin was still there. I might have stopped watching this year at this okay. point because I can't remember. But uh, like, if I did watch, I probably was still skipping Tailspin and Goof Troop at this point. Okay. So. Uh, the next year, which, like I said, I wasn't watching anymore at this point, kicked off Chippendale's Rescue Rangers, bumped up Tailspin to three o'clock, bumped up Darkwing Duck to three thirty, bumped up Goof Troop to four o'clock, and then they added a show called Bonkers, which yeah. I'm not familiar with. I watched a couple episodes. It was about a cat. It was an orange cat who was like a police officer or something. I think like Zootopia, essentially. Okay. Uh, uh, but yeah, I don't remember. Like, it was not something that enticed me that I was like, oh, I need to watch this. Yeah. Like, at this point in time, I may have still, you know, randomly caught Darkwing Duck episodes. I mean, possibly not uh, being in high school. I 
had a lot of other stuff going on in my life. Uh, but the next season, season five, they kicked off Tailspin, bumped up Darkwing Duck to three o'clock, Goof Troop to three thirty. Their four o'clock is a hodgepodge of stuff. Every day has different stuff, uh, with gargoyles being added on Fridays. And then they added uh, to 4.30 every day was Aladdin, which I honestly didn't even know Aladdin had a TV show. Uh, I knew Aladdin had its own TV show. It's all about him being a street urchin still. Okay. So it's before he, the before Aladdin becomes okay. like the end of the Aladdin. It, Jasmine, I think, is in that. So, so I've there's like no genie in this either? I can't remember. I think the genie's in it too. I can't remember, man. Uh, That's really awkward. I have to say, like, Gargoyles was the one thing that kind of, like, pulled me back. And okay. I can't, and maybe I just wasn't paying close enough attention, or, like, maybe I just wasn't looking through the TV guide. If anybody knows what that is, I oh. applaud you. Um, yes, TV guide. But, uh, yeah, I, like, tried to start watching Gargoyles when it launched, mm-hmm. but I was having issues finding when it was actually going to be on the television, because they kept... They moved yeah. it all over the place, man. And then, like, even, you know, we I'm, you're going to get to it, but, like, yeah. n- the next season, it gets even crazier, so. Yeah, so, like, the, this year, we said the 4 o'clock hour was a little weird. The Schnookums and Meet Funny Cartoon Show? I have no idea what that even was. Never heard of it. I have no idea what's going on there. Apparently, it was only on on Mondays. Bonkers was on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in this time slot. And then Gargoyles was once a week on Fridays. Yeah. Like so, I don't I don't know if they were having animation issues at this point where they couldn't kick out one show enough episodes to have like a four o'clock block where they had to like throw in all these random things. Not really sure what happened there. Uh, season six, they kick off Darkwing Duck. Goof Troop jumps up to three o'clock. Bonkers is again a solid show at three thirty. Aladdin gets a solid four o'clock booking, and now their four thirty is Gargoyles Monday through Thursday. And then they added a uh, Timon and Pumbaa show on Fridays. So what's uh, what's your look of acknowledgement? There was a show that had a marsupial on it. And I can't remember if that is, you know what? That might've been the Shook- Schnookums and Meat Funny cartoon show thing. It okay, was like I have no yellow, idea what that is. A yellow um, marsupial of some sort. I can't huh. remember what it was. Huh. I don't know why that just popped in my head, but no worries. Uh, but yeah, so that that explains your gargoyles from Friday to gargoyles going to Monday to Thursday the next year, um, and then uh, the last season that they did the Disney Afternoon, they kind of just threw everything in there. Uh, weirdly, they brought back Darkwing Duck for the three o'clock show. Uh, they moved Aladdin up from four o'clock to three thirty. Then they added gargoyles full time again. So. It went from the 4 o'clock show on Fridays to the 4.30 show Monday through Thursday, back to the 4 o'clock time slot five days a week. And then their 4.30 time slot became the hodgepodge with Timon and Puma on Mondays, the Quack Pack Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, which makes it sound to me like it's a a Mighty Ducks spinoff because on Fridays they had the Mighty Ducks cartoon on. So I, I literally don't know what the Quack Pack was. I remember the Mighty Ducks cartoon, uh, but I don't believe I ever watched it. If I did, it was just randomly. Um, but yeah, so that was the last season of the Disney Afternoon, and I I understand why it was the last season. Like, that's, that's a pretty weird, bizarre collection of cartoons by that point that, other than Darkwing Duck, I didn't really care about. And I have heard from a lot of people that Gargoyles is really good, and I want to watch Gargoyles. On Disney Plus, is it okay? Then I need to definitely watch that because I, I I know a lot of our friends, specifically like Dave Richmond, has told me a hundred times how good Gargoyles is, and I just I haven't watched it yet. So this is the character I was thinking of. I just don't know what cartoon oh. is actually on. Okay. Uh, what is it? what is and what's it that? Was a, a Marsupilami, and it was a Disney show. Interesting. It was on the Disney afternoon, but I might be wrong. Uh, so on the voting, the original poll that started the whole concept for tonight's episode, on the poll, DuckTales got the most votes, which I can't be angry about. Um, Chippendales Rescue Rangers was in second place. Third place was Tailspin. What's up? He was on Bonkers. He was on Bonkers? Okay. 
Okay, that makes sense. Um, I am upset that Darkwing Duck came in fourth because, uh, like I said, it's my favorite of all of them. Uh, I didn't, I didn't expect it to be that low. Uh, Gummy Bears came in fifth. Gargoyles came in sixth. And uh, Goof Troop had very few votes. Um, and then a lot of the random shows didn't even get mentioned. So that is bonkers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember what he looks like. And he had a human counterpart from the police. Right on. So. All right. Uh, now we have hit the point of everything else. Uh, the last thing that I did uh, after those, uh, the Hanna-Barbera poll, the, the Cartoon Express poll, the Disney Afternoon poll, I literally put up a poll and I said, what cartoons have we not yet discussed that you loved as a kid? And I think there ended up being like 60 some things on this list. Uh, so much like uh, the Hanna-Barbera list and whatnot, we're just going to blast through them in the order of votes. So the top first few we're going to do are going to be pretty popular ones. And then we're going to get to some really random, crazy and obscure stuff. And, and we'll call out the people that, that we'll call out, explain the people that uh, added them to the polls. First up is Inspector Gadget. Were you a big gadget guy? Yeah, I, I agree. Shoot. Dr. Claw was pretty cool uh, villain. I recorded that uh, living in uh, Germany when I was watching it the most. We recorded a lot of stuff off the television and then would end up watching. Uh, I'd watch the reruns on the cart and like just rewinding and hit and play again on the VHS over and over again. So definitely a huge fan of inspector gadget with penny and uh oh my gosh what was the dog's name i am drawing a blank uh dino mutt no, no. Uh, yeah i don't remember what the dog's name was penny uh, and go, uh, go ahead fine. I'm uh, num up. number two is a cartoon that i really enjoyed as a kid and that was thundercats 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 ho oh. Uh, really enjoyed it. I like Panther a lot. Like, I mean, Lino, Lino, what's up? Brain. Brain. Brain was the name of the dog. L Lino was a good character. I, I have nothing against him. I just, I don't know. Uh, Panther was cool. Who was the, oh, the dude that had like the nunchucks? Uh, Panther was the nunchucks. Oh, no, sorry, okay. Uh, it was, he was the other like Lynx. Tiger? Tigra? I thought that was a chick. So, well, no, no, no. When they first launched, it was Lino. Uh, Tigra was the was the tiger, and then Chitara was the girl. Okay, yeah, it must you had be Tigra. You had Panthro, who was the panther. He was the big muscle dude with the um, um, Tigra had like a, a bolo kind of thing where he had like three balls that were on this like whip thing that he could wrap people up with. Chitara had a bow staff, Panthro had the um, nunchucks. Then you had Wiley Kit and Wiley Cat, which were the kids, and uh, and they, they were the ones that hung out with Snarf. Uh, come on, Panther. Oh, J yep. Jago was awesome. I did like Jago. Jago was the main guy that they killed off in the first episode. Yep, the Obi Wan ghost. Kenobi character. His ghost sticks around. Um, then you had Lynx, who showed up later. You had Bengali, who showed up later. He was a white tiger. He looked just like uh, Tigra, but he okay. was a Tiger version. And then you also had an, uh, and I want to say there was a third one that popped up right at the same time that Lynx and Bengali were there. And I want to say it was another girl, but I can't swear to it. So I want to say Tigra is the one that I really, I'm trying to, yes, Tigra was the dude that I liked a lot. And I, he was invisible. Like that was one of his like powers was he could yeah. go so yeah, he was the one that I really do. So yeah, Love really Thundercats. I hate every reboot that they've made since the reboot that was on the Cartoon Network about ten years ago was like an anime one, and it looked really like uh, I did not dig the animation style. And then they made another one just a couple of years ago that was like Teen Titans Go esque, where it was like very eye popping, childlike okay. looking. I don't think uh, I've seen that one, but the reboot one like 10 years ago, I remember really enjoying it when I watched it. I was I couldn't stand the art, man. Like really? Yeah, the, the animation was just not something that I could I, that I liked at all. Uh Looney Tunes got put on this list. You a big Looney Tunes guy? 
love me some Looney Tunes. Give me they are a lot of fun every day. Um, I think my favorite Looney Tunes property is the uh, Thousand and One Rabbit Tales, which was like their spin on the uh, the Arabian Nights story. Uh, I remember that as a kid, like just having a lot of fun with all the different like vignetted episodes that like made up the like stories that was being told at night. Like I really, as far as Looney Tunes goes, that's probably my favorite Looney Tunes property. And I know it's not a like half hour animated cartoon, but like it was one of their movies, but that's what I think of when I think of Looney Tunes. Uh, the Simpsons, the longest running cartoon in history, I believe, right? It's yeah. Cause it came out way before South Park. Yeah. Uh, still on the air. Um, I liked Simpsons when I was younger, um, but once I stopped watching it after like two or three seasons, like I, I haven't cared to ever like keep up with it. I watched the first like five or six seasons kind of religiously and could watch them over and over again. Uh, there just became a point in time. I don't know what, what happened with their writing. I just didn't get into it anymore. And I just Understand- quit. So. Understandable. I mean, like, 35 probably it's years 40 it's been on for 40 years now no it's it's 35 i want to okay. say because i want to say it launched with fox in like 87 okay that would make sense so that'd be like like when married with children launched and a couple of other tv shows but i'm pretty sure the simpsons launched in like and maybe it wasn't 87 because it was they were a spinoff of the tracy ullman show so which was on hbo in the late 80s so it was probably like 89 or 90 maybe uh, maybe they get that uh, yeah it's probably somewhere in the it's the late 80s, late 80s yeah. were, well there was a tracy omen show that was on fox before it was oh, ever, i thought it was on hbo uh, okay well, they, that, it must be the fox on hbo but like the ah. first one was on fox got it and they would put in cartoons of this because it was essentially a skit show the old tracy yeah. omen show yep. on fox was a skit show and uh, they had some stuff on there. And then after that, once they launched their own, I want to say it's like 88 or 89. And yeah. Um, Been yeah on so the, next, the next one on the list, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pair it with something that's a little farther down because the, the, there's two shows. Uh, the next one's The Family Guy. And I'm going to pair it with South Park because... Anytime somebody tells me about an episode, I always think, oh, that sounds really funny. Like, maybe I should give these shows a chance. And then every time I watch an episode of Family Guy or South Park, I literally say to myself, this is the stupidest shit I've ever watched in my life. Uh, like, not as stupid as Beavis and Butthead, but I I'm, I can understand where you're coming from with that. Family Guy, like, um, my dad got into him for a while. Uh, I don't like there's a couple of sequences that i think are absolutely hilarious sure. for the most part it's i'm i'm not interested in that or american dad or no yeah uh, none of that oh south park i've watched a few episodes and um thought they were okay i tried to watch their latest like pandemic one okay on hb it's on hbo max and i ended up falling asleep while i was watching it so obviously hmm. did not keep my uh interest well enough so yeah like uh, i i know i've watched uh i watched the south park movie in 99 and it was garbage i absolutely hated that movie Um, i think hilarious i like the movie uh, and i actually but like the and trey parker and matt stone are are really smart and funny guys sure Uh, i love basketball like i think they're very talented people and and to do what they're doing and still be relevant with South Park after twenty something years, sure. And like it's it's an impressive feat, but uh, it's just not for me style wise. Like I agree. And uh, what I was going to say is the one episode that I have watched and enjoyed was their uh, World of Warcraft episode. Um, I really I really enjoyed that one. Uh, my roommate like twelve years ago was a huge South Park fan, so. I would watch them from time to time with him, usually while I was drinking to try to make it funnier. Um, but I just never really enjoyed the episodes while we were watching them. I ended up watching the World of Warcraft one with him, and I was like, oh, man, like, I have to give them credit. Like, I'm actually laughing and actually enjoying the story they're telling in this episode. But over the years, like, I mean, you know, mutual friends of ours have, like, described episodes to me. And I'm like, oh, man, that sounds like really funny. Like, I think that would be a really funny episode. And then I'll either watch that episode or, you know, watch a random episode. And I'm just like, 
nope, still don't like South Park. Still don't, still don't care about it at all. Like it's just so not you'll watch thing. that, but you won't give Captain N a shot. I got you. I got you. <laughs> uh, next on the list after Family Guy was the Transformers, which Mike Owens put on there because somehow I forgot it when I was thinking up the responses that I put on. Thank uh, you. Mike. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mike. I was literally typing in the Transformers when I saw that he had like, I mean, like he added it as I was like typing it in and I was like, oh, thank you. Somebody else. I have no idea how it slipped my mind. I have no idea. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. We did like four polls in a couple of days. Like, I I don't know if I thought it was on a different one. I don't know how I screwed up. I've got got a list over here that I've started that uh, we're more stuff that I missed. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, crap. We all missed, obviously. So sure. Uh, Uh, After Transformers was Batman, the animated series, which we both admitted really enjoyed that show. Thought it was really good. Uh, I like the style of it. I like the animation of it. And I felt like they did a good job of much like the 66 Batman giving me like a villain every week that had a plot that they foiled. And that's like, that's all I cared about. Like, I don't be wrong. I like long, long storytelling over the course of a season, but like Batman, the animated series did exactly what I wanted, giving me a bad guy and wrapping it up in 22 minutes. Yeah. And you know, this is our first time we ever got Harley Quinn yep. uh, to this TV show. And uh, she's a fantastic character that I like the animated version better than anything else uh, that I've read or watched. Okay. Uh, you know she um margot robbie's hot and she's fantastic to look at as yeah. Harley. and i think she does it as much justice as we could probably see on the big screen I agree. Uh, but uh yeah i i feel have like you, have her you watched this is like even higher in the cartoon so have you watched any of the hbo max like harley quinn animated series no like it's R rated. Like I guess there's like massive amounts of profanity and violence in it. Um, I've heard really good things from some mutual friends of ours. I haven't watched it yet, but like I definitely hear it's worth watching. Like apparently, like because like I said, it's rated R. There's lots of blood, lots of gore, lots of violence. Like DC, I'm interested in watching it. DC's like hardcore stuff or yeah. straight to DVD video movies. Um, they. Um, they're very hit and miss for me. Sometimes okay. I can sit down, totally enjoy it, and be completely engrossed in it. And then other times I'm just like, I didn't like the Killing Joke, which is one is my favorite comic book made by a uh, Batman comic book ever. I thought they did a really the animation good or the animated one wasn't good. I didn't like it. No, they did some stuff in there that I was just kind of grossed out by. Um, oh, interesting. And, um, then they also did, um, I but uh, under the Red Hood. Mm-hmm. is amazing i love that one i have uh, i have heard that as well i need to watch that one and i like the the batman beyond uh the return of the joker is really yeah. good so but yeah. um as good as batman the animated series is the next one is probably my favorite comic book iteration and i know you being a much more diehard comic book fan than i am you have problems with this show but the x-men the animated series I absolutely loved it and ate that shit up as a kid. Like, no, like, and this is a really good interpretation of it. Like, but I know, it, I know they, I know they take some story on, like, I know they changed Bishop for the cartoon. And I, I didn't actually, I don't, I don't remember minding that one as much okay. as like, I think I minded more the, the, like, what they decided to do with the Phoenix stuff. Sure. Um, yeah. But, but for the most part, like, this comic, this especially, this is like the height of X-Men. This is the yep. height of comic book nerdum. Um, this was 93, 94 when they relaunched the like 92, I think is when this started. I think 92 is when it started, yeah. But like 90, like the mid 90s, like early 90s to mid 90s was like the height of popularity for, for comic books, essentially. And this was, and X-Men was by far my favorite comic book at this point in time probably still is to this day which is proof by my, <laughs> which is proof by my x-men collection and my ridiculous amount of money that i've spent on it um so like yeah i love this i love the animated series i think i watch more seasons. i've seen season one and two more than i've seen any of the ones after that well. so, but 
Yeah. It's, no, it's, it's on Disney Plus. I, I did I did last year when Disney Plus came around. I marathon like the whole first season in a day because uh, it may have been more than the first season. I literally put it on for like six or eight hours when Disney Plus launched because I was excited about being able to watch that again and not having to put the discs in. Um, another one uh, suggested by my friend Jill uh, is a cartoon I can't believe that I forgot because it is one that I really enjoyed uh, it was Tiny Toons. Loved it. Yeah, Tiny Toons was so good. Like it was just, you know, kid. Ver- it was literally. I, don't know, I can't say the Muppet Babies, but it was like you know the the younger versions of some of our favorite characters getting into ridiculous, you know, schemes that Bugs would come up with. And uh, yeah, Tiny Toons was absolutely amazing. I can't believe that I forgot it to put on this list. Uh, we've already talked about South Park. In the same vein as as uh, Tiny Toons was Animaniacs. Which Fantastic was show. a great a Steven Spielberg produced show, like he lots of fun, Yakko Wacko and Yakko Wacko. Yeah. Uh, uh, Steven Spielberg produced Tiny Tunes as well. Oh, that's very cool. I didn't realize that. Uh, you mentioned earlier Beavis and Butthead. Um, I liked Beavis and Butthead when I was growing up, and maybe it was because it was just so stupid and it was like two stoner like characters, like. It was like MTV's version of Bill and Ted, I guess, for me when I, I maybe I was just at the right age when they came out. I don't know, but like I enjoyed watching Bill and Ted. It was stupid. I won't argue that it was pretty ridiculous. Like I, I kind of I I think the thing that drew me the most to it was being able to watch music videos inside of an animated show. Yeah, maybe. Like, I, that was I felt I felt like that was cool like you know in a Who Framed Roger Rabbit cool world way like you're blending animation and and real stuff for me I think maybe that's why I liked it as much as I did. I, this was a show that I enjoyed more when I would go over to friends' houses, like hang out or party or um, whatever, and we would watch episodes of beavis and butthead and and just enjoy it all together and crack sure. it up so yeah it, i i definitely could see that as being like like we talk about it all the time watching a comedy movie is way better watching it with people than ever watching it by yourself um the next one uh, about well not even halfway down this list like about 20 percent down this list um is is a is a show that i own all the seasons over there of this uh this show also was garfield and friends um Garfield needs to be much higher than I ever remember to put it because I absolutely loved Garfield and I don't know if any of the peanut stuff is on your list but I couldn't ever like there was a couple of Charlie Brown and Snoopy shows but I, I don't I, I couldn't use the specials to talk about so like <laughs> yeah, I don't know uh so I not on my list. I, it's not on your list all right so that's fine uh but garfield and friends uh i really enjoyed it uh the u.s acres that was cut in there because it was always like a 10 minute garfield short a 10 minute u.s acres short and then another 10 minute garfield short to end the show um the u.s acres stuff was fine like it never bothered me but obviously i really enjoyed the garfield stuff far more um but you're not a garfield fan uh, it's fine uh the, I, I, it's it's fine. I okay. just, uh, I'm not, yeah, nowhere near as big of a fan as some other people are with it. Yeah, so. true. What about Alvin and the Chipmunks? Love me some Alvin and the Chipmunks. Too. That was that was a very fun show. And when they introduced the Chipettes in the later seasons, that was a lot of fun. And sure. <laughs> I mean, they had to change it up, and they had to get females interested in the show. I'm sure there was a demographic reason, but. I don't know. I, I always kind of liked the Chipettes. I thought they were a cool addition to the show. I thought they were um, hot. Okay. Yeah, you know, animated hot. Uh, Muppet yeah, Babies. Well, Muppet I mean, Babies rock. Uh, the Muppet Babies are awesome. They uh, they are a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I, I, I watched the Muppet Babies a lot. That would have been like a mid-80s show, late 80s show, 89 maybe probably. That was probably mid-80s. Yeah, so I definitely watched that. I was definitely like age appropriate to like enjoy that and watch it. Um, next one is one that I absolutely loved growing up, uh, probably because it's a sci-fi techie nerdy show, uh, was Mask, where it had different vehicles that could transform into other vehicles and then every character had a specific mask that they wore that could do different things. Uh, my all-time favorite character on this show was a dude named Brad, 
He rode a green motorcycle. The green motorcycle would turn into a helicopter and he could fly away. Uh, his helmet did holograms so he could make holograms to like trick the bad guys and whatnot. Um, he was my favorite character. I did. I had, I have, I should have got the toy out. I still have to this day, his toy. Um, I, I had, I don't have any more the main dude's, uh, red car that had the gull wing doors so that it could turn into an airplane. Uh, I had that toy. I don't know what happened to it, but I don't have it anymore. But Mark maybe was that main character's name or something. I really don't remember. Gotcha. Yeah. But you're a fan of mask. Yeah, mask was cool, man. Like uh, I had some of the cart, like the uh, some of the we had the bad guy like SUV, uh, okay, black yeah. and purple. We had the green and black uh, helicopter motorcycle that turned to the helicopter. Yep. My best friend when I lived in Germany, um, as an army brat, his his name was Josh Warner, Josh Warner, and he had the red car that had the the wings bowling the doors. Yep. I always wanted them. I always wanted that car. Yeah, it was uh, pretty cool. I don't know what ever happened to mine. Imagine Josh probably stole you, it. <laughs> Josh from Germany stole it from you. Sure. Makes perfect sense. Go I mean, Germany. I was in Germany around the same time as you were in Germany. And so I was on a military base and he was probably on my military base before he went to your military base. Like, Probably not. I moved out in '86, and we were friends for like two or three years before. Oh, cool. Yeah, no, then he didn't get it. I didn't. I didn't move to Germany till '89. So yeah, nah. Uh, my Thank timeline you. is off. Uh, so following Mask, the next up on the list was The Tick, which I remember liking The Tick, but I've never gone back and rewatched it or anything. Like, that's a show that I probably should watch as an adult because yeah. I probably get a lot more out of it than I did when I was watching it. Uh, Cause that came out when we were like freshmen in high school, I think. Yeah. sounds about right. Uh, I, I want to say that that was, yeah. Uh, middle school or beginning of, uh, of high school and it was on Fox. I remember it. So. Yep. Uh, so the next one was suggested very by silly. Brandon. Go up. What's up? Oh, I was just saying it's a very silly show, The Tick. Like, yes, it, it, yeah. Um, and I have not watched the Peter Serafinovich uh, live action version. Uh, I did watch the um, uh, Kronk live action version uh, that was on Fox, uh, drawing a blank on that Warburton. dude's name. What's that? Warburton. Patrick Warburton. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I watched his version um, and the animated one. I have not watched the Peter Serafinovich version. Uh, so anyway, the next one was suggested by our friend Brandon Yotter, who was on the Ninja Turtles episode. Um, is if I'm remembering right, this Spider Man from '94 to '98 was the MTV version of Spider Man. I can't remember. I, I know there was one on Fox that was in this time frame ish. Oh, okay. Where like pretty much all of the backgrounds were in like computer animation 3D, where okay. every all the characters were in 2D traditional animation. Oh, interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, for some reason, I was thinking that this one might have been. I know MTV did a Spider Man series for a while in the 90s. Um, but this is probably the Fox one. Uh, next up was Archer. You're you an Archer fan? I'm not. I've okay. never, never gotten into it. So I, I watched the first couple of seasons. Um, I, I liked it, but I didn't love it. So I stopped watching it and then never started watching it again. Uh, do you remember The Critic? I do. I loved The Critic. Yeah, that it was, was a, a lot of fun. Um, it kind of spun off of, I want to say it was, maybe it was a spin off of The Simpsons. Oh, really? Uh, but I can't remember for a fact. But yeah, it was It was on Fox and it was right after The Simpsons. Mm -hmm. And I really, yeah, like being a movie guy and yep. for him to do what he did. And like, there's an episode of, of it where they say, um, uh, they <laughs> <laughs> totally making fun of what has now become our sequel culture and they were making fun of speed to speed reading and, <laughs> and uh and it had and it showed um dennis hopper had somehow survived getting his head knocked off and he was okay. he's in a library with Ke keanu reeves character and he's like you have to read this book at 55 words a minute or we're gonna blow up and then <laughs> Keanu Reeves' character just starts going the blah, blah blah, and he's like, "Oh no!" And like the entire library explodes. 
<laughs> and then they make fun of like Jurassic Park five or something, and it's like, and they're like, they say something where they make fun of like he's he's like, oh no, the 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 Raptors have gotten even smarter, and then like they say something, and he, all of a sudden the Raptor like pulls up a pipe and sits down in a chair and he's like he's like actually your entire plan is going to fail because (laughs) british accent it's it's a pretty brilliant show it was yeah and john lovitz is that character is fantastic so Mm -hmm. uh rocky and bullwinkle were you a big fan of those growing up uh i wasn't a huge fan my this was from my like my dad's generation for the most part if i remember because george of the jungle rocky and bullwinkle yep. my parents loved those and sure. i watched them and i enjoyed them and i think yeah. they're fun and, and silly and entertaining but yeah um i would never have picked this as a something that was on my list right i mighty mouse kind of falls in that category too it was kind of like the generation before us yeah um mike owens added the real ghostbusters to this, this list but we had already talked about it in another section so we're going to jump over that you ever watch rick and morty no it, it, I, I, I watch it and I enjoy it. I don't religiously watch it and I'm not caught up on the show, but when it was pitched to me as uh, as a acid trip version of uh, Back to the Future, I was like, all right, I'll give the show a shot. And like, I've liked everything I've ever watched of it, but like I watched the first season or two and then just like haven't gone back to it yet. Not for any reason other than just laziness, but, and well, the other thing that tends to happen with me is if I fall like three or four seasons behind on something like the walking dead, I loved the walking dead for like six seasons. And then like, I watched season seven, like three years after it came out. And then like, I haven't watched anything else since then. Cause I just haven't really cared. <laughs> like I'm sure I'll finish the show someday. Eventually, a bunch of stuff's already been spoiled for me. So like, I have no rush to go watch it. Yeah. Um, I, I unfortunately think some people don't realize when you spoil stuff for people, it kind of makes them not want to go waste their time to watch a show. Yep. So, uh, you know, someday I'm sure I'll eventually finish it, but you know, oh. it's man, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll buy it on DVD and I'll put it on my shelf back there. And 15 years later, I'll still be talking about how I've never put the discs in. Uh, what about pinky in the brain? Uh, I loved pinky in the brain. Uh, I don't know if I, it was ridiculous. I'm pretty sure that I stopped watching by the point in time that they got their own TV show. Okay. But, but the, like one of my favorite, absolute favorites of Animaniacs. So yeah, very, very, very just bizarre, random, my, crazy uh, stuff. Junior prom date and I used to quote Pinky and the Brain to each other a lot. Oh, so, that's awesome. Yeah, when we had um, uh, we had um, English together, Tiffany Cagle. So her and I used to quote it all the time. And I actually ended up buying her like a little figurine of maybe Pinky or the brain. I can't remember which and giving it to her at some point. So nice. That's awesome. Uh, the next one falls into that. Like our parents category was Popeye. Not a, Not a fan. Huh? No, I'm just indifferent. Nothing, yeah, sure. nothing bad about it. Just whatever. Were you a Star Wars, the Clone Wars fan? I actually just started watching this. I never watched oh, okay. it. I haven't watched it in years. Uh, I just watched the first episode yesterday. Oh. Uh, and my kids are into it. So it might be something that I try to watch a little bit more with them. So nice. Yeah. I highly recommend it. It's it's a show that I really enjoyed. And it's a show that uh, was on Netflix for a long time. And they did the sixth season of it, I believe. Right. And bef- another one. Oh, yeah. Yes, uh, right before the sixth season got released, though, I went and rewatched the entire series last year and just really, really had fun with it again. Um, I would obviously forgotten a lot of the stuff, you know, from years ago when I watched it when it aired, but really, really enjoy the show. Season three, a little too political for me, but, you know, I got through it. Uh, this one is added by you, and it's a show I'm not familiar with, so give me the lowdown on Pirates of Dark Water. Yeah, the Pirates of Dark Water is just a... Uh... I think, think Star Wars essentially just on water and instead of space. And okay. like, uh, but there's like these, these things around the globe that if you put them together will give you ultimate power. So um, you have this guy who is supposed to be a prince who is like trying to seek these things out and um, very much the animation style of like Thundercats almost. 
Um, and then uh, there's a bad guy who's like chasing him to get all these pieces instead at first before he does. Um, it didn't get it. I own the complete set on DVD. I just nice. just got it a couple of weeks ago. Oh, I cool. I haven't spun them yet, uh, but the um, it's an unfinished series, which really. Like, yeah, they 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 were spending a whole lot of money on this set or a, a, a voice talent and like all the animation and everything was like super top notch. And then they and it was one of those things that I remember watching it on when it was airing on Fox. Big surprise, right? Fox doesn't allow something mm-hmm. to finish. Um, but yeah, so- how many Fox shows are incomplete? <laughs> so I was I remember watching this and like thinking wait a minute there's so much that like i don't remember getting an answer to this or that and i didn't it was at that point in time where i wasn't fully understanding that they just cut shows off and turn things off before they're done so like i I remember being like i don't and so like i kept trying to watch episodes and episodes and then like sometimes they'd have one or two episodes they were doing kind of like the disney afternoon thing where like sometimes pirates of dark water would be on at three o'clock and sometimes it wouldn't be on at three o'clock and sometimes or whatever the case and i got really frustrated i remember being uh, a fan of the show and not getting an actual ending and then to find out years later that they actually never did end it they just funding for the show so that's insane but uh Uh, cool i might have to go to youtube and look up some clips of that and see what it looks like uh spongebob squarepants what are your thoughts on I just What's wish that? that I, I hate this show. Oh, really? I, I hate it with a passion. My kids love it. I find SpongeBob absolutely annoying. I find Patrick to be so stupid and worthless <laughs> as a character that it's not like I I know oh, the whole thing, man. Like maybe if I'm on an acid trip, maybe that maybe <laughs> I would like it. Um, it's one but, of the ones that uh, my stepdaughter apparently absolutely loved it when she was growing up. So my wife and her have like watched a lot of the show they're big fans of it i our wasn't employee, age appropriate good our employees wanted us to run the spongebob squarepants movie oh as part of our movie uh, our uh, employee movie nights oh wow yeah and i finally caved in and said we'd do an animation month and we put this in there along with the iron giant and nice I remember what else was on that list but like you know obviously covid happened and we didn't get to do it so I hope Transformers, the movie, was on that list. Uh, anyway, next up is the Bugs Bunny show. We kind of talked about Bugs Bunny. Um, the Pink Panther show, again, probably, you know, the generation before us, but I know I watched it. So weird, right? Because, like, I, I, I can't remember who I was just watching, talking about this recently, but, like, when um, the Peter Falk, not Peter Falk. Peter, Peter Sellers. Peter Sellers, thank you. He, um, I'd like I watched the cartoon so I thought for sure that I'd like this movie and then my dad was like this is not what you think it is no. and then I tried to watch it and was like no this isn't I'm not going to watch the rest of this I'm done yeah so. definitely two totally different things very bizarre that they ended up sharing a name yeah uh recess were you a recess fan was not yeah I didn't watch it either story but it's definitely not even appropriate to talk about on here okay uh, you can these. tell that to me later because I'm excited about stories that can't be told in public. Uh, Underdog. Underdog was all right. Yeah. It's it was fine. fine. Uh, my buddy uh, Eric Hallett added the Silver Hawks, which, which I definitely remember. I, I remember the like, I remember like advertisements for it before, mm-hmm. so then actually ever watching it. But the characters, it was done by the same animation studio as Thundercats. And oh. they, they had the exact same voice actors doing. Oh, cool. Both shows. Mm-hmm. And so um, so it's like, it's kind of funny and weird because they don't even try to change like their sound. They just, oh, really? yeah. And um, I, I, years ago, this is when we had like uh, Napster and stuff like 20 years ago, uh-huh. I remember coming across a, some audio recordings and it was Thundercats, the actors from Thundercats and Silverhawks screwing up their lines. <laughs> and, and, and saying fuck and shit oh and nice stuff while they were like I <laughs> snarf says snarf or no panther says uh something like pass me a samo flange to to uh to lionel and lionel goes what the fuck's a samo flange <laughs> <laughs> 
And so it's literally like it was like three or four minutes of them just constantly flubbing up lines and stuff. That's hilarious. And 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 I think it's on YouTube if you go looking hmm. for it. And it's very much worth it if you've ever watched Thundercats and enjoyed it. So uh next up Mike Owen suggested gargoyles, which we've already addressed in the Disney afternoon. Uh he also added Freakazoid, which is a yeah. I'm not familiar with that. What is it? He was a, he looked kind of like the Bride of Frankenstein, essentially, but he had like this onesie that was red and he had like a white lightning bolt. It was kind of in the Animaniacs. Like it was, it was produced by Steven Spielberg. It was on the Warner Brothers channel. I Uh, remember that. Now now you describe it to me. Slapstick kind of thing. Right on. Uh, Super Mario Brothers Super Show kind of just falls in with that Super Mario Brothers 3 show for me. I'm not really sure the difference in any of those. Uh, Avatar, were you an Avatar The Last Airbender fan? I had never watched it either. Uh, Teen Titans. I heard it's great. I've never watched it. Yeah, I, I, I haven't watched it or the Teen Titans Go. Uh, Teen so Titans Go sucks. What's that? I do not like Teen Titans Go. Right on. Uh, Powerpuff Girls. It's definitely not my thing. Not your thing, huh? I think I'm going to start watching it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I just want to have my, I want I want to know all the backstory before the, the CW show comes out. Why, why, uh, why, just watch the CW uh, show. You, you know. know. <laughs> uh, Batman Beyond didn't get very many votes, and that's a show that I know a lot of people love. I was going to say, this is surprising that this is so far down the line yeah. because of the fact that I, I enjoyed it. Oh, me too. But- uh it's not something i've rushed to make sure i saw but like if i was home and it was on i was definitely tuned in so yep uh cowboy bebop is something that i want to watch our friend jay is huge into it uh, he it loves it just a movie is it a television show is it, yeah it's a tv series okay they, they're making the movie right now well no no no. there's like a cowboy bebop anime movie. oh and oh i see what you're saying yeah or no they're making a cowboy bebop live action tv show right now it's not even a movie i don't think uh but yeah okay um yeah i haven't watched any of it uh our friend jay loves it it's apparently like very much like han solo-y like or han solo firefly like i guess it's a crew of people on a spaceship that go around hunting down like they're basically bounty hunters i guess um so it sounds interesting someday i promise jay that i will watch it uh brandon yotter added the oblongs which i've never seen I, i i mean i've heard of it but i couldn't even i think they're very elongated looking people maybe not not entirely sure next uh shows next two shows next are, two shows are, uh go for it uh so visionaries knights of the magical light i added this to our poll i don't remember it uh so you told me about it a hundred times i think the action figures were about the same size as gi joe figures but they had like a hologram on their chest yes. and all of them had like a special like their like spirit animal essentially and like their spirit animal like they could transform into it and like fight each other um yes it, it, like merlin was like the like the guy who created this magic so that these guys could fight because it's all like arthur legend-esque Ah. Uh, um, but yeah, I, I I always dug the concept and the cart and the action figures were really awesome. So and yes, then, I, I I wouldn't have remembered that, but now that you've explained it to me, I do remember those. I remember the toys. I had the toys. I'm not sure I ever watched the show, but like there weren't yeah. very many episodes of the television show. Okay. So uh, uh so next up is one that uh, Mike Owens added, but it's one that you've talked to me about a hundred times. And don't you own this on DVD also? uh no because no. the producer has not released these he's oh. released them on dvd but he uh i actually have to watch them on some free uh app what was the oh, okay. app? snag films app snag yeah. films okay yeah um that's where i found episodes of the galaxy rangers uh no guts no glory so um yeah like i'm a big like this was a pretty cool show where you had uh everybody had like cybernetic enhancements okay Uh, these galaxy rangers had cybernetic enhancements and one could like transform his body into whatever he needed to to survive whatever environment he was in one had a robotic arm that he could blow like could just uh like shoot energy blasts out of 
uh, one had the ability to like um, psych, uh, she was psychic and um, what's the other one? She was Jean Grey, essentially. Okay. In what's it when you can mess with other people's brains? Uh, telekinesis. So no. that's where you can lift things. That's tele uh, telepathic. Telepathic. Thank you. So yep. she was telepathic, and she was. Uh, but yeah, and then you had another guy who was um, good with computers, and he had, like he had like these two like things like. Comp these two little small computers essentially like they think like vision but at a very small level okay. and, like, they could phase into circuitry and stuff oh, and, wow. he could talk to them and do things with them it was just a, i really dug the show and you and i talked about this for decades this was something that i think is primed to be um messed with to be turned into a movie mm. turned into uh an updated cartoon something along those lines i think that this would translate really well to a transformation of what it was but yeah the producer's really weird about the the rights to this show so oh that's a bummer uh so next up uh you big adventure time guy nope. never watched it either uh what about pokemon did you ever watch nope. any of that and nah, neither did i dragon ball z nope nope uh jimmy neutron i'm looking at people who have voted on this and i'm like that makes perfect sense sure uh a lot of the last few our friend albert voted on him he's a huge anime person i'm honestly surprised his brother didn't vote on him uh but then again sergio made a comment that some of these things that are uh that are on this list aren't technically considered animated they're considered anime and apparently that's a totally different thing but oh i didn't know that yeah, not not to me. It's all animated. It was hand drawn or computer generated. Uh, what about Jimmy Neutron? Um, Jimmy Neutron is something that I never really got into. It's after I was done. Like uh, I see Jasmine voted for it, yep. and uh, she's definitely the demographic it would have been towards. Nice. Uh, our buddy Pat added Pro Stars, which was the uh, Michael Jordan cartoon. So obviously, I, I watched it. Michael Jordan, Wayne Gretzky, and Bo Jackson. Yeah, so two out of those three people are, you know, heroes of mine. So I definitely watched it. It was cheesy and dumb and, yeah, whatever. Uh, Brandon Yotter added the Venture Brothers. Never watched it either. I know my friend Jason Romberg was a huge fan of it, um, but I've never seen a single episode of it. Mike Owens added Exo Squad, and then you and him had a conversation about that on the comments. Uh, what was what was Exo Squad? Uh, actually, we didn't talk about Exo Squad. We were talking about oh. Transformers uh, and how he couldn't believe anybody didn't add it and how I was really close to it. Exo Squad, um, that, that was uh, like essentially like it was these guys who had like these um, cybernetic like pieces that would clasp on top of them okay. and then they like become more powerful essentially. Think of like the exosuit from uh, Aliens. Alien, okay. But like each one Aliens. was, like, uh, each one was like tailor made to do like something specific. Hmm. Like All one, right. fly, like jump into the water with it and swim faster and stuff. But uh, so then Mike Owens added Ronin Warriors. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I got no clue what that is either. Um, Sergio and his brother. Uh, well, Sergio added it, and then him and his brother voted on the Jackie Chan Adventures. I did not know that Jackie Chan had a cartoon. I didn't watch much of it, but I remember it popping up right at like rush hour time when oh, okay. when rush hour came out and stuff like that. So. That's pretty cool. Uh, uh, Jeremy Enlow added C Lab twenty twenty one, but I feel like we mentioned something that was called like C Lab twenty twenty or something earlier. Yeah, like one or the other, I can't remember. Okay. But yeah, we already mentioned this, and I don't. Yeah, I, yeah I don't remember it at all. Um, you added Bobby's World, which I do remember having fun with. It, uh, go ahead. What's Bobby? <laughs> um, Howie Mandel. Howie Mandel, yep. Uh, TV show, and it was just adorable. And yeah. Bob, Bobby had this great imagination. It reminded me of, like, it reminded me of Howie Mandel's version of, like, Harold in the, paper, in the Purple Crayon, which oh. is one of my favorite uh, books of all time. Sure. Uh, kids um so but yeah like just how he just constantly had this crazy imagination 
that would take him all over the place. So uh, the next one is one that I added. Should have had it ready. Uh, but Clerks, the animated series lasted six, no, six produced episodes. Two of them aired on ABC. The rest of them came out with this DVD. Um, I really enjoy the animated series. It's so ridiculous and bonkers. Like it, 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 it's a 15 out of 10 on a ridiculous scale. Like, but it's fun. And it's, 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 it's Jay and Silent Bob and Dante and Randall. And like one of the episodes they go to court and the jury is made up of NBA basketball players. Give me my money back. Yeah. Like, and it's just, it's really dumb. And like, they, there's one sequence where they go into Japanese style animation when they're like chasing somebody and like they have a, they have a bear driving a car and like, it's just, it's all ridiculous, but I just, I, I love it. I think it's so much fun. It's, just it's bizarre stupid humor that for whatever reason i love i love it because it's kevin smith but i also love it because it's just so out there did you watch any of the episodes yeah i own it on dvd it? okay cool i really enjoy it you might have bought it for me or i bought it myself i can't remember which but uh yeah like it's it's a very silly show i remember watching it when it aired on abc and mm-hmm. then it and then like them yanking it real yep. quick after that second episode so yeah uh, it lasted two weeks uh, and it wasn't even like episode one and two that they showed it was episode like two and four or something weird that they ended up airing uh so the next one was speed racer um i never really i, I know i watched the cartoon but like never religiously or went out of my way to watch it yeah same here um i added toxic crusaders and then i felt like you and mike Owens had a conversation about it Oh, he just said that you he couldn't believe you added Toxic oh, Crusader before, before you added Transformers. Transformers. <laughs> so you're you 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 and his line of comments, I got very confused on some of them. So yeah, like I don't know, like and obviously I 100 percent truth. I watched Toxic Crusaders before I ever saw the Toxic Avenger film. So I know they were around the same time, but I definitely like I think the movie was like 86 and then the cartoon was like 90 ish. Uh, but I, I, I did I saw the animated show before I saw the actual movie. And I just uh, realized is captain planet on your list of stuff that we didn't talk about. It is good. Okay. For whatever reason, I don't know why the toxic Avenger made me think of captain planet, but. Uh, because of all the toxic stuff going on in the world, obviously. Yeah, so then my buddy Nick Joy added the Mike Tyson Mysteries. Have you ever seen this show? I never watched it, but I do remember Mike Tyson being animated at some point. So I'm not surprised that it, somebody else remembered it. <laughs> I have never heard of Samurai Pizza Cats. I have not either. Okay, so I really have no nothing to say about that. Uh, here's where our buddy Chris Schneider voted for Hulk Hogan's Rock and Rock and Wrestling, and I, I, you know, an hour later, still have no idea what that show is. I um, do. I'm gonna make a note. I don't have the notes anymore because they were on my phone, and my phone is now dead. So oh, so yeah, so you can continue. You're just gonna have to lead a little bit. So I got you. Uh, are you not gonna be? Uh, you can't plug your phone in anywhere around you. Hey. That takes effort. Okay, I'm just saying, like, you plug your phone in, you've got your list back. Um, I mean, I can bring up the fact that the next thing on the on the one vote list was from David Richmond. It was a show called Bionic 6. I don't remember Bionic 6, um, so I don't know what that was. Uh, Albert added The Adventures of Super Mario Brothers 3. Uh, he was the only one that voted for it. Uh, it was also discussed at some previous aspect, I think, during the uh, USA Cartoon Express non-Hanna-Barbera shows. Um, the last two are two that I liked when I was a kid, but I liked them because I liked the franchises. Back to the Future got an animated show for a while. Um, in the same animation style, they had a comic books at the same time that I own all the comic books as well. Um, I, I have possession of the animated series. Um, you watch those even though you have to put the DVDs in? Uh, I don't have to put the DVDs in. I have them on a digital format that allows me to stream them. 
Um, and they're terrible. I can't lie. Uh, the Back to the Future uh, animated series is not the greatest. But, I mean, like, it's Back to the Future, so I have to like it. Now, I will say, the Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures show did yeah. work for me as a show. I did enjoy that. Um, I thought it was fun. It was time traveling every week. Well, I mean, both these shows were time traveling every week. The Back to the Future ones were, were much more poorly written, in my opinion. Or, you know what? Honestly, here's the thing. I haven't been able to go back and rewatch Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures so they're probably just as bad. I just don't remember it that way. Because until I rewatched the Back to the Future animated show, I thought it was great too. Uh, and it, it, it's not. It's, it's pretty cringeworthy and hard to watch. So the glass shattering moment will probably happen on Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures if I ever get around to watching it again, if I ever find a way to watch it again. So did you get your phone plugged in and get your list of the other stuff I forgot? Uh, okay, so these are what everybody forgot. Don't blame it, Justin. Oh, yeah, all right. So, uh, George of the Jungle was on my list, but we talked about that with Rocky and Bullwinkle. Yeah, so that's right. Captain Planet, you brought up just recently just when in the last five minutes adventure. Uh, if anybody doesn't remember Captain Planet, with our powers combined, combined. Uh, Captain Planet is our hero, gonna, gonna take uh, pollution down everybody. to zero. Um, Heathcliff. Oh, the uh, Kmart version of Garfield. Yes, essentially. I remember yeah. liking that cartoon, though, when I was when it came out, when I was watching it. Maybe I had more access to it than I did. Garfield? Garfield. Yeah, Can't I don't remember. know. Um, but so, yeah, that was on my list. Care Bears is something that... Oh, my God. Literally, wow, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you had those. Yeah. Um, there was um, a show uh, when we were ugh, in the height of popularity of all the comic books. Jim Lee, along with others, jumped, Wildcats? Ship, jumped ship and went to Image and created their own uh, publishing company. And Wildcats was a cartoon that got made. Only a few episodes were made. Really? Many. Uh, it wasn't. I know it's not a full season. Um, so I remember that, the comic book. I honestly didn't, I, I don't think I knew that there was a show, but when you brought up Jim Lee, I just had a feeling that's where it was going. Staying with the comic books, we didn't bring up Spider Man and the Amazing Friends. And Disney. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, yeah, like uh, Iceman, Firestarter, and uh, and Spider Man running around and being silly. And it's, that's one that, like, I know I watched it when I was young, but it was one that, like, I never ever have gone back and rewatched so like i've got like six to eight year old shane's memories of it and i don't really remember much uh it's on disney plus oh cool interesting yeah. watched uh they Fox also property i guess there's an episode um where that led spider-man and the amazing and his amazing friends led to there's an episode where they go to the x-men oh okay uh, because uh, they're trying to figure out Firestarter's, Firestar, Firestar, not Firestarter, sorry. Firestar is, uh, she's having issues with her powers or something. And hmm. so she goes there and they end up trapped in the mansion and uh, in the danger room and stuff like that. So Very um, interesting. it also led to them making X-Men Pride of the, Pride of the X-Men. Pride of the X-Men, okay. Uh, which was a one-shot X-Men cartoon, um, which kind of was the springing point for the actual X-Men animated series. That's awesome. But yeah. So um, you had those. Bucky O'Hare. Oh, I do remember Bucky O'Hare. Yeah. Very much like Star Fox. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just essentially like, a, yeah, they were in space and it was all these animals animal mm -hmm. anamorphic animals who um dead shot duck is i think one of them and then you also had captain bucky o'hare yeah um, i we always me and some of the friends in the neighborhood growing up always thought that those were funny characters and cool um dungeons and dragons had its own cartoon that <laughs> oh, don't even know if i knew that yeah um so you had that um 
And then the I'm going to bring up something because it doesn't seem like we're limiting ourselves on when things came out. Okay. It's a television show that I absolutely love watching with my boys when they were young. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish they were still into it now because it was so much fun to watch with them. Um, not that I can't watch this by myself or with Luke, but um, Phineas and Ferb. It's, Never uh, seen it. Did you uh, yeah, enjoy that much? Oh, dude, it's so funny. So, uh, like, uh, Phineas and Ferb are two um, stepbrothers who spend their entire summer vacation uh, trying, coming up with crazy inventions, and their older sister, Candace, is always trying to bust them and uh, turn them into mom and dad for doing, like, the very first episode, they build a roller coaster that goes through the entire city and like goes all over the place but something ridiculous always happens at the end that like the entire creation gets destroyed or something and uh but then the side story with this show is um there's a they own a platypus named perry okay and perry Perry is a secret agent oh uh and his main nemesis is a doctor an evil doctor named dr doofenshmirtz who is always usually the reason like he's trying to build something to like cause a problem and every in almost every episode his Perry destroying his creation or him screwing up his creation is inevitably what makes Phineas and Ferbs's creations like completely disappear <laughs> and, and, and it's non okay. um they have some it's also on Disney plus it's a Disney property they mm-hmm. have some they did uh they do a star wars episode like a star wars like mini movie kind of thing it's like 80 90 minutes long but it's like star wars spoofed through the whole thing it's it's really funny um there's one where they they uh they they end up hanging out with the marvel superheroes okay oh yeah like because they keep going officially those characters yeah like they like they um they end up like going to a different dimension where the superheroes are or something. And it's just, it's, it's silly. It's fun. It's ridiculous. Uh, and the stuff that like the, the gags that happen are like adult level gags, but the kids aspect of it's still a lot of fun and smart. Oh, so, cool. um, yeah, definitely. So the, that's everything that's on my list of things that we've missed. So that is awesome. Well, that's two hours of fun cartoon talk that we had. Sadly, we didn't know everything that everybody had talked about, but I mean, I still feel like we had some good discussions about some of the best cartoons. You have an inquisitive look on your face. There was a cartoon with a bunch of animals who lived in a tree in the middle of a park, and they had a car. The Shirt Tails? Was that the Shirt Tails? I think that was the Shirt Tails. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what you're talking about. Yeah, they had a car, yeah. Okay, Uh, so... Yeah, because like if I if I remember hundred percent, like one of the, the tree trunks like opens up and they like ramp drive out of it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's some pretty awesome cartoon talk. Um, we have a pretty awesome episode coming up that I think is going to be our next one, but it might we might have to next week come up with something smaller to do. Um, back in two thousand and eight, a friend of Jason and I is. Um, when blogs were a big thing, uh, he put up a big blog where he asked uh, some personal questions related to your life and movies. Things like, you know, what's your favorite movie? If they made a movie about you, who do you want, like, who would you want to play you in a movie? Uh, and Jason uh, brought it up today, and I don't, I don't know what made you stumble across it. Um, I just was, honestly, I ended up clicking on my own blog and going okay. and looking through old posts um that was so it. It, it was one that our friend troy posted first and then our friend john petty and like answered with his answers to the question uh, uh, and then michael michael michael, michael did as well uh, i don't think we'll be able to get him on the show but uh you answered and then i answered and so we are going to do our best to get the four of us probably not together we'll probably do We'll probably do separate interviews with with John Petty, and then we, we'll we'll probably do the the big chunk will probably be you, me, and Troy going over all of our answers from ten years ago and what we would change. Well, twelve years ago, thirteen years ago, 
and then what we would change now. Uh, and then we'll probably do a separate one with John Petty giving his answers and everything. And then I'll cut all that stuff together for an episode. And then I'm thinking when we have guests on here in the future, we ask at the end of the episode, after we've discussed whatever our topic is, we ask that guest these questions, kind of like at the end of Inside the Actor's Studio. Because uh, if I remember, it's like eight or nine questions and they don't have to be super thought provoking, but it's just like, you know, what what movie made you realize that cinema is is art, you know, things like that. And like, who's your favorite fictional character or like, you know, who's your favorite actor is one of them. Um, it's interesting because while I was texting with Troy and and, uh, and John today about it, Troy, well, Troy didn't really say much, but John Petty literally said that almost every one of his answers is going to be different from like the then to the now. When I looked over mine, I don't think many of mine have changed, mm-hmm. which is weird. There's one or two that I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a different answer for when I as I think about it over the next week. But most of them, when I reread what I wrote in 2008, I was like, yeah, that stands up. Like, I I, I, I think that's probably what I, I'm still going to go with. And what, what were you saying? I was going to say the exact same thing. Like, nice. there's not a lot that has changed in my um in my opinion on what I wrote back then to where I am now. So that's awesome. So yeah, I'm really looking forward. And I mean, like I went back and I, I read both John and Troy's this afternoon. Once we thought, Oh, this could work as a, as a really good podcast. I, I mean, I'm very curious to see if any of Troy's answers hold up. Cause literally I don't know anything of any of his answers. Like he names movies that I've never heard of. And I consider myself a pretty good cinephile but he names actors or scenes in movies of like stuff I've never heard of. And I'm like, well, I can't talk to you about this, but I can listen to you talk about it. But like, I'm very curious if all of those answers are still going to hold up or was Troy just being ridiculous in his answers. Good question. So that'll be really cool to see. Uh, so I, I, I can't a hundred percent say we'll be able to have that done just cause it's going to, it's, it's going to require, you know, some scheduling and stuff like that. Uh, both of them are up for it. Like we we're going to have all four of us for sure together talking about it cut together. I just don't know if I'll be able to have it done by next week. So it might be something that we have to de- delay a week or something. And you and I can just pick something else random to talk about next week, but I'm really excited about that project. I'm really happy that you came up with that idea. Cause when you texted it to me and said, this could be something we could, you know, run with. And then we texted some ideas back and forth. Like, I really enjoyed this afternoon's genesis of like turning this into an episode and then, you know, keeping it with it. Like I'm, I'm very excited to hear Jason Richardson's answers to these questions the next time he's on the show. Um, you know, and it's, yeah, I, it, we'll probably just stick with the four of us for that first time. Cause I feel like we're going to be doing a lot of talking about all of our answers. Uh, so it's probably not going to be a short episode uh, cutting together the four of us talking about this stuff but i'm excited in the future to you know make this our you know questions at the inside or questions at the end of inside the actor studio to kind of just like wrap things up i think yeah. it'll be a good way to wrap stuff up when we have a guest in the future and get get other people's ideas and opinions on you know what makes movies movies to them and i'm really looking forward to it uh, so that's a great two hour episode we had tonight i appreciate your time man uh talking about cartoons was a lot of fun a lot of a lot of nostalgia definitely so uh we will talk to everybody next week either we'll have again i can't i can't i can't promise that i'll be able to get this episode done uh uh next week but we will we'll have something that we'll we'll get put out next week so thank you guys for listening we'll see you next week